<laughs> why, why, why is everyone so gloomy in this game? Why can't, why is no one happy? Base number one was a bit happier. Kind of. Is that? No, that isn't mm. quite happy. You don't think? Okay. Well, none of the haters, like I say, everyone in this game is really gloomy. gloomy really, yeah. Oh, no, look at me, I'm in series. This one is, that one, that one was pretty happy. Sorry, yeah, that she's kind of smiling. Okay. She's like, hey, you know? Oh, nice colors. This hurts me. <laughs> and then, um... This is what Hello there, and welcome to this special stream with GSG Legend, Henrik. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, hello everyone. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, and today we're going to be uh, live streaming Age of Wonders 4. Uh, what an amazing game. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> oh, thank you, uh, thank you. So maybe, Henrik, can you uh, introduce yourself a little bit? Um, sure, yeah. <clears throat> I'm Henrik Foreus. Uh, I've uh, been at Paradox for, for more than 20 years, um, creating and designing, programming uh, that, a lot of our GSGs. I guess most people probably know me as the creator uh, of Crusader Kings 2 and 3 mm -hmm. and, and Stellaris. But I've, huge uh, games. I've, huge games, yeah. But I have a, a, had a hand in, in uh, most of our GSGs over the years, in one capacity or another. And these days, I'm actually Chief Creative Officer. Um, awesome, awesome. Oh. So, uh, my name is Leonard Soss. I'm uh, the director and, and one of the founders of uh, Triumph Studios. And I'm the director of the Edge of Wonders series, and I've done Overlord in the past. And I'm yeah, very honored, Hendrik. Uh, we've worked together a lot in the professional capacity, but just to, uh, to talk games and play, play games uh, together. Uh, and uh, with this, uh, uh, yeah, Age of Wonders 4 just around the corner, it's, it's perfect to uh, yeah, just have a look and see what, what you think. And maybe to look into like at our game with, uh, from the GSG perspective. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I got to say, though, I mean, the Age of Wonders series uh, has always been an inspiration for me. And I have fond memories from my, maybe not my childhood, but my youth, at least, uh, playing Age of Wonders uh, 1 and 2, Shadow Magic, a lot of fun. Yeah. So yeah, We were basically kids making those games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you must have been. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, All right, so... Okay. Uh, Let's go. So let's you, start you wanna, Yeah, you, you, you want to start a new game, right? With um, showing off the faction creation, which of course also was a, was a huge thing in, in Stellaris. Yeah, of course. Uh, and I think, you know, this is the big thing with Age of Wonders 4, or at least one of the big things, is the fact that you we, can... We, just, uh, we, we yeah. just stole it. You stole it? Well, I think oh, you no. did it really, <laughs> really, really well. Um, so... Uh, Ooh, which realm should we should we create a realm maybe yeah let's let's go full random here so the thing with solaris uh was that it was kind of a 4x game where we put the emphasis on the first x exploration yeah. um and thus we felt that uh it was super important to keep every new game fresh and new and for that reason um i really pushed for having um a lot of randomization in the alien yeah. species and so on. Uh, there was some pushback from various folks who <laughs> thought that was a bad idea. Uh, and it does carry some risks, right? Because... Um, yeah. I think the tagline was to explore a galaxy filled with wonder. Right? Yeah, the I galaxy is yeah. uh, vast and full of wonders, I think. Or ancient yeah. and full of wonders. We used both. Um, cool, cool, cool. So yeah, the, the risk with, with random factions uh, is, of course, that they can feel weird and generic mm -hmm. uh, and not very expressive <clears throat> and so on maybe you want to talk about how you sort of tackle that uh yeah sure sure um so first off in in our game you can uh, play in various ways you can play a, a story mission you can play p predefined scenario or you can customize your own world so you basically the game premise takes place that you are these these, these returning wizard kings that come back to cl reclaim the lands of mortals and you can decide to pick one of the canon worlds, but you can also generate a new world to travel to, uh, and then you can assign traits to those worlds. That could be like an, an ancient uh, fey world or a, a world governed by dragons, uh, a water world, and, and so forth. And then you can go in and define your own faction or pick one of the custom ones. And I think the same thing applies to the um, enemies that you face. So you can have 
enemies that are picked from one of the pre-made uh, factions. So you have a ruler that governs over a number of uh, fantasy races. It can be handcrafted. Some of them are like a trophy, like or, you know, like like a, a, a wizard governing over orcs, for example, or a, uh, an ancient elf, wood elves, or whatnot. But you can also encounter randomized factions. And uh, as default, normally the uh, races in the game are, uh, as when you boot up a game, pick one of those uh, pre-made factions, but you can also fully randomize them. And what's even uh, also a lot of fun is that you can uh, play, you can create your own race, and then you can store that in what you call the Pantheon, so that's the collection of all the, your progress and all the factions that you created, and then encounter them in future games. So that's just how you configure it, uh, oh. depending on how you configure it. But why don't we first create our own faction? So first step uh, that we have in the, in the previous one mm -hmm. is where uh, you basically select your the core form, right? So this is your... Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I, have this, uh, I have this idea that uh, I'm going to try and recreate uh, kind of tropey dark elves. And of course, I think it's it's great cool. to lean into yeah. lean into tropes because it's yep. very helpful in both you know, high fantasy and, and science fiction settings. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is basically your, your, your sort of like your biological species that you select early on. Uh, it's not your entire uh, race that you can, because you also select some, some, some future traits, but this is about their body. Um, so dark elves, uh, which is part of Elfkin, they come yep. with uh, keen sighted, uh, which uh, if you mouse over uh, will show the ability. So this affects uh, accuracy in combat, um, and they have underground adaptation. So this means that you start in the underground. I don't know if you want to start in the underground, but you can also yep. change this. So you can be surface dwelling dark elves if you'd like. Um, but you choose one of the other. Yeah, you I think snip, I. Uh... For example. Tenacious. Maybe yeah. that's cool. I uh, kind of skipped past this or, or rushed past this a little bit. But uh, yeah, I, I chose Underground Adaptation because, uh, again, I have this Dark Elf fantasy. And okay. uh, I think that's uh, suitable. Uh, I think I don't remember what's the default. Is it Arcane Focus, maybe, for Elfkin or something? Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, Underground Adaptation. Um, that's going to work for me. Yeah. And the really cool thing here mm -hmm. is as well that the, the ruler doesn't have to be the same uh, species, right? Yeah. Uh, you can be a different uh, race than your minions, yes, if that's your thing. Yeah. Uh, and you can decide to uh, to ride spiders uh, if you want to, but uh, horses are cool too. Yeah, <clears throat> let's go ahead. I mean, this is so beautiful. Uh, it's just a pleasure to spend time in this customization and look at these guys. Uh, yeah. So yeah, here so we have culture. Culture, yeah. <laughs> Culture uh, defines basically your starting units and your starting economy. And you'll see these little numbers next to uh, each choice. And everyone, uh, e each step from now on adds affinity points. So dark gives you two shadow affinity. And this um, uh, determines uh, what sort of affinity your empire has towards one of the ma yeah, cosmic magical forces. Shadow is all about treachery, about um, scrying, about uh, also about knowledge, about um, right. cloaking and uh, nasty uh, <laughs> strategies. Really, <laughs> it's it's uh, necromancy, right, and the cold. And uh, yeah, like in terms of magic, it. yes, absolutely. If you choose, uh, uh, if you choose magic uh, for shadows tomes, you get that. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, I'm gonna go with dark, too. Oh. Again, lean mm -hmm. into my little fantasy here. Uh, and we have the society traits. Yeah. And you can go in all dark, or you can maybe mix them some chaos or astral, which maybe also fits to this. So society traits further define your your faction the race at the start. Um, yeah, it's quite complex the way you can you can mix all these things. Uh, yep. And some of them are marked good or evil as well, Yep. like this yep. one. So if you choose Ruthless Raiders, you mean that uh, your starting alignment uh, will be evil. Um, during the game, of course, your actions will also affect uh, how, you how you are perceived in the world. Yeah, you can go further into this alignment or, or actually change your ways <laughs> and yep. go. Uh, good as well. uh, we have a, a quite a like a more more sort of like simple linear uh, 
uh, alignment system compared to OGSGs, which of course has a lot more uh, facets to uh, to morality. I think uh, it it works really well. Um, right, ruthless raiders. That sounds appropriate to dark elves, perhaps. Um, yep. So what does it do? Your city oh, gains sorry. Bonuses. Yeah. Uh, the nearest city gains three gold and three draft per tier of units killed after successful combat. That's pretty nice. Mm. So you get some you get some loot for yeah. uh, winning. You start off with some additional uh, hero items, which is also cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. cool. Uh, let's go with that. And ooh, Guardians of Evil. That's really evil. Uh, is that good? Yeah, so that means this basically amplifies uh, your evil alignment. So if you go in and, and uh, become even more evil, you will get rewarded um, by right. having more draft and Imperium per level of uh, evil alignment. So yeah, why not go all the way? Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's go all the way here. Uh, let's lead into that and try to role play uh, Ruthless Evil. Dark and right. Fire. Okay, so here's so, my first tome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe I can explain a little bit about what the tome system is. So basically, we've cut up the entire tech tree into tomes of magic. Each tome of magic is assigned with one of the affinities that we talked about. There are six affinities. Um, and then each tome contains a number of spells and bonuses that, that you still need to research. Some of them are uh, actually unlocking at the start. So if you choose Tome of Shadow Souls, you'll get uh, initial two points of Shadow Affinity. These are Tier 1 Tomes. There are a total of five tiers and 54 different Tomes in the game. And as you wow. play, you basically pick and choose which Tomes you want to add to your collection, affecting uh, yeah, your development of your empire. Using tomes, you can transform your people, so you can start off as regular, normal uh, uh, so, um, dark elves, but you may want to turn them into uh, necromantic dark elves who uh, radiate frost, or turn them into undead, uh, oh. if, if that's your your your, your vibe, <laughs> or turn them into devils. It's all uh, possible. So that evolution is is a huge part of this game. It's not static fantasy but there is this way to sort of like uplift your people uh, from the start of the game and you can mix and match those tomes so you're not stuck in a single path and uh, yeah it just allows for a lot more replayability and and strategies and role playing uh, as you uh, go along yeah no i mean the tome the tome system i think has been with age of wonders from the start right but in a way um but yeah, this is from the yeah, less very, much, much more simpler <laughs> because you basically yeah. locked yourself in in a particular path at the start of the game, right? So you could choose like, okay, I'm gonna go chaos, uh, fi fire, and and yeah. nature, for example, or whatever, and then you can, but you're stuck with it. And here you can uh, gravitate more uh, towards one side or another uh, during the game. Yeah, I think it's, it's beautiful. It more. really leans into the role playing stuff. Uh, I guess I'm going with the Tome of Souls. Um, it's either that or cryomancy. It's more direct. Yeah. I mean, um, where, where you're living, you still have snow, right? So I'm like, I don't know if you still want more <laughs> snow. <laughs> no, you're right. Good point. I'm going Sometimes with that. It snows in April. It's a song, I think. But now it's actually snowing almost in May. <laughs> yeah, it's sad times where I live. Uh, okay, let's. And here's the interesting choice. You can choose to be one of the mortals. Who are kind of resisting the Wizard Kings, right? Or you can be an they? invading Wizard King. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the mortals have bonuses towards uh, other factions on the map. Uh, they're basically more popular rulers. They get some more uh, gold income. Well, the Wizard Kings are uh, better as as magic initially, uh, and they can cast spells more in combat. Uh, yeah. They have a, like an overchannel ability, um, so they're better spell casters at the start. Oh, that's cool. And I love the fact that you have these uh, tooltips and tooltips that we... Yeah, I don't know where we got that idea. I uh, <laughs> can't really remember, but... Uh... <laughs> well, we didn't we didn't really invent it, but uh, it works uh, really, really well. I yeah, think. I think you uh, you made it ma mainstream. <laughs> Maybe. Cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, let's 
uh, yeah, let's go with the Wizard King. Um, and just a tip, if whenever you play uh, Age of Wonders 4 for the first time, you know, there's a lot to take in with all the tooltips and all the modifiers that you see, but we suggest just to, to role play for the very first time. Just pick what feels right. If you don't set the difficulty too brutal, you're just having, you're able to get to have a great time, learn as you go, play the, the fantasy of your dreams, and just step by step, you, uh, you, you learn the game. Good advice. Well, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can customize here. Um, there's the coat of arms. Yeah, there sure is. I, I think I'll go with something black. Traditional. Isn't there red there? I thought I used. I thought I used red just before. The second uh, anyway. uh, It's sort of reddish. Uh, uh, all right, and a nice symbol. Something nasty. Or you can... Well, something mystical or something. Maybe like that. Okay. Pink. Oh. <laughs> okay. Ah, that looks pretty good. Cool. Uh, and then there is a weapon? Or a sort of a... Yeah. So this uh, is basically your, your, your starting loadout. Um, it, which you can change relatively quickly in-game. Uh, but... Um, yeah, you, it, when you develop your, your leader, because they are actually present on the map, uh, you get to update your, uh, your, your skills uh, around them. So if you want to see, okay, I want to be more of a combat spellcaster, um, you pick up abilities that, that sort of uh, work with a particular combat style. But early on, that doesn't matter much. So yeah, now you can be of a different race as you may as you, uh, as you people so you can be an orc leading dark elves or you could be a halfling leading dark elves or a mole man <laughs> leading dark elf <laughs> <laughs> look at this look at this fellow or, or gal beautiful uh yeah i love the fact that you can you can do that but it's very appropriate since you're sort of an, a wizard king i guess this is the is this the elven shape Kind of. Yeah, this is the uh, elven shape. It looks like it, it yeah. like some ears sticking out of the hood. Um, All right, and then it's low. There's the uh, the clothes that you can adjust. Yeah, there's so much stuff. I think to make it clearer, maybe take off the cape and let's see, is there a helmet? Yeah. So, all right. So this oh, is what she yeah. looks like. <clears throat> um, yeah. The physique. Yeah, that okay, means so uh, basically how uh, how thin they are, how wide your character is. <laughs> right. And then there's leg length uh, as well. So she's got quite short legs right now. Um, you can up the legs a little bit. Leg length. Like, uh, yeah, that's, that's a funny thing. Like <laughs> super superhero wow. size. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's basically how tall they can be, I guess. Uh, Nice. I'll... Arm length. <laughs> yeah, you can make like a uh, gorillas. Oh. Really cool. Yeah, uh, and, um, there's also an, an, a race step to the side, where you, which allows you to basically configure the way that your people look and also the, your mounts. So if you say like I want to ride black, uh, black horses, uh, you can change that there as well. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, so there's separate tabs for your ruler and your race. Yes. Really, really cool stuff. Uh, now let's see if I can find some. Uh, I guess you can be a dark elf too. Um, Doesn't have to be, but that looks yeah. about I think right. She's got some, yeah, I think she's got some face paint on. Yeah, yeah. here's the. Classic D&D elves are like more like purple, right? Yeah, yeah kind of. Maybe. Or grayish. Well, that, that looks good. Hmm. And then there's the pose. Yeah, Should so this pose is used in uh, in diplomacy, um, and otherwise the the one where, uh, with the weapon is used in uh, in combat. Yeah, I think uh, here I can see that she has a lightning orb. I think I'll go with that. So, um, and then different heads. Wow. Ooh. That's a undead, cute, undead version there. <laughs> uh, oh, that looks pretty good. Um, 
eye color or something appropriate. Glowing. Glowing sort of lavender. That's nice. Hairstyle. I guess something that fits with the crown. Oh yeah. Hair color. White tropey. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah, here's the Wizard King. Uh <laughs> Yeah. That's a remind oh, me a little bit. Did you, I played these these old uh, gold box uh, D and D games back in the day. It was like a game called Dark Queen of Crin. Had this <laughs> very cool dark elf oh. uh, at, the, at the cover. <laughs> All right, yeah. yeah, it rings a bell. I used to play those gold box games as well. All right, well, I mean, this. I mean, it looks, it looks awesome. Um, uh, yeah. So let's. So Maybe do you want to stick with the uh, white horses, or do you want to stick with the nightmare steed? The, uh, some other types of wargs, I mean, maybe. Uh, let's see here. Army mount. Here they are. <laughs> wargs. You can shoot spiders too, right? But maybe that was. Uh... Uh, yeah, that's a special uh, one. So I think nightmares as well. So at the start of the game, you could sacrifice one of your uh, your traits, your physical traits. Then you uh, add in. You can add a uh, a special mount which has adds new abilities. So this is more of a cosmetic change that you have here. Uh, but there are like higher tier mounts that you can uh, that you can kit your armies out with. Right. Yeah. Well, I think it's uh, it's looking pretty good. So it let's, looks like uh, uh, a nice looks... bunch of classic dark elves world conquerors. Yeah. Exactly. So if no it good. works, we should be certainly up to no good. Uh, I know yeah. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> but let's see if we we'll actually start on the ground then. Oh yeah, there's this as well. Your title, first name, Empress, appropriate, and then come up with something. Soul Reaper. Uh, dark Elves. That's a little boring, maybe, but hey, it works. Um, yeah, so sinister. Um, Science of darkness. More than true I. elves. Maybe uh, that's in the, maybe in age one's oh. fashion, right? So because they are the, I think that they uh, they true are elves. The real, they're the real deal. They can kill every, uh, all, all of the traitors. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> the true source. Yeah. The true elves. Here we go. Ah, beautiful. Indian ground, torch sledge area. It's gonna. So here we see an overview of what you've chosen. Yeah. So here's the modifiers and rules. Cool. Send it to you again. Yeah. Of course, you can also bring up this information later. So you start off with eye shackles and. Soul fire. Soul fire. Some good spells. damage spells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so if you zoom in. Right. There's your starting town. Here's my city. Choke point. Choke point one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about that. I think. Uh, uh, I'll shine today on this. Something like that. Hmm. Um, yeah. That's your that's your own town. Man. And then I think, yeah, we need to build something. Yep. I you, I tend to go with food. Food first, expand or the one of the, the workshops also good. So anything that you build uh, will be faster afterwards. Um, yeah. It starts with it's one of those workshop. Yeah, maybe you're right. Uh, let's yeah, I queued it up. Yep. And let's see another. Outrider. Yeah. So you start off with a skeleton from your, uh, your starting tone. So there's even some undead elves. If you start off with frogs, you actually see frogs with a little frog skull, which is pretty neat. <laughs> um, yeah. Right. So here we are. So the game is sort of like uh, province based. So as your city grows, gains population. For each population, you will get a new um, a new province, which you can then um, choose where to expand to. So look, next, right next to you, 
you have a mana node and you have a creature cage that maybe you can pick up. So there's a, I think there's a free pickup right there next to you. Lowing. Oh, where is it? Uh, yeah, there it is. There's some, uh, yes. there's some gold there. Uh, yeah, that too, but to the... Oh, yeah, right. here's, here's a chest. Yeah, so maybe you can Something. send the scout out. So there's one army then, the, the one with the, the those are the, your, your scout units. So if you yeah, look I'll at the... I'll send out yeah. my outriders. See what that is. Oh, nice. Storm spirits. It's, it's a unit. That's really... Lesser. That's a nice little bonus. Well, that was a good start. Um, cool. Well, I'll, I'll go and get the gold as well. Yeah, and you can move. There's a passage to the surface world, so you can have a peek at what's happening uh, above. above ground about the world that you undoubtedly want to conquer. Uh, but you can also yeah. start s scouting the underground. I think I'll change my first unit here to make another scout instead. Yes, the outrider. Uh, so. And there's, there's that one. Actually, I should probably attack these. More, like yeah, fun. these are. Yeah, you probably need some more than just your scouts. Oh, they have disappeared in the fog of war there, but. Let's see. Um, yeah, yeah, because you moved your scouts, yep. Yeah. But you can do that on the next turn. Um, so, yeah. And we so need each... some research. <laughs> Yeah, so that first one, Enchanted Crow Companion, is a, what we call a unit enchantment. This will enchant all units of a particular type, in this case, your scouts, meaning that uh, they will get this, this crows following them, making their s scouting more efficient, uh, so they can see further. Um, you have one scout in your army. And there yeah. was... Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I chose the... Uh... Uh, the crowd companion. I think vision range is pretty good uh, on discovering the world. Cool. That's well, the good. first turn, maybe. Yeah, uh, we're ready. Yeah, the, uh, the notifications on the side just take you through every turn, everything that you need your attention. You can just go through it one by one, and if you're done, you can just hit the button uh, to go to the next turn. Yeah, there yeah. we go. As your indeed your alignment below the red crescent. Uh, yeah, Some minus order. minus thirty. It's uh, it's yeah, a good it's start. Good. <laughs> That's a good start but, uh, indeed. Does it have any I... sort of uh, uh, visual effects or anything? The uh, as you go more evil or good? Um, not necessarily. But you can, uh, of course, when you when you select uh, tomes and skills that w will have side effects. Uh, that to, to make you evil. The, generally, those things that you choose will have a, an effect. Like you choose evil um, tomes, you do evil things, then uh, yeah, you will start building up an army of nasty stuff. So it, uh, it, it's sort of like nice. tight in that in that way. But you can also during the game, if you say like, oh, I feel that I need to look more evil, you can always go in and adjust the appearance of your ruler. Um, to say like, yeah, I've started off really nice. I think now it's time for personal makeover. I think that I should be uh, wearing some dead, you know, people uh, on, around my, on my body uh, because it's more fashionable. To respect your personality better, then you can adjust your appearance. I already have some skulls on your hip, right? So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I think this is this is also really really cool that you can actually change this. As you play, yeah, and you can also it. not just do this just for yourself, but also for the heroes that you recruit. If you say like, yeah, I'm, you know, your hero, you, yeah. you might have some cool skills, but I don't think, uh, you know, I like your your choice of outfits that much. And if you want to join my ranks, right, and you want to be one of the the big heroes of darkness, uh, you need to really work on your outfits, and then you can just change it for them, right? Yeah. Uh, look, but no, I, I think I think look, look, look. these guys look pretty mean. Good. <laughs> they, look, they already look pretty mean, <laughs> yeah. But you know, I I love role playing like that. Uh, and, yeah. You know, since you heroes are so important in this uh, game. So, so heroes have a uh, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, I'll go so back. when you go to the recruitment screen, they have like a, a big starting ability. Like this one's a rooted healer, and the other one's a sensor. So these are the starting abilities. If you mouse over those abilities, you see what they all that they will do. Um, 
Oh, yeah. Maybe they need to search first. first. Yeah. All right, sensing range. Yeah, so they can um, see sensing range is um, vision into the fog, so they can sense enemies further further away. So there's less chance of them being ambushed. And you know where to go, basically. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I think I'll have you have to have another city, right, uh, before you can uh, uh, recruit yeah. more heroes. Hero limit, one other one. Now you and can go you over the limits, but there's penalties. Yeah. Oh you yeah, you have to... heroes. And there's a prison. Yeah. Yeah, that, can... this is for your enemy heroes. So you can actually capture enemy heroes uh, during battles, and they will end up in your prison if they are lucky and stay alive, or if they're dead, they get got you crypt. Uh, of course, when you're a necromancer, you can decide to animate uh, those dead heroes, uh, and also you can execute captured heroes. Or you can exchange them for ransom. Um, so, depending on who you are, you can do different things with your captured uh, enemies. Um, so, heroes are your, your army leaders. They have uh, more details in their character upgrades than a regular unit has. They're less uh, they're expendable in that way. And they also have uh, empire sorry army-wide buffs so if you, you really need to be careful how what what sort of like specialization you take with your hero so they can for example become uh, <clears throat> better at, at buffing particular unit types they can be ranged they can be magic users uh, and so forth uh, and they have an inventory as you see here so during your um, your discoveries you can uh, go on expeditions to clear out ancient wonders which will then result into uh, usually discovering magical items which you then kit out on your uh, on your ruler which is also a hero and then your additional lieutenants that that you have in your armies really really cool uh super good role playing uh, i'll uh, i'll go above ground i think with this unit let's see what right, the so there we looks are. Like. oh there's some monsters there, there. There's an ancient tree, the father oak. Oh wow! This a... is. Look at this thing. Yeah, it's, it's a, like the uh... urban zoo or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, beautiful. It's the world, the world tree. It, uh, it is a high tier. I think it's gold uh, level. Oh. Uh, exploration site. So, you, this is something that you need to save for later. Um, so when you go in, you get a little adventure. Um, but with, uh, in, uh, like a series of events which you uh, can then help to uh, solve the encounter, either make the battle the, that ensues easier or maybe avoid it altogether, steer the outcome in that way. But uh, yeah, you don't want to enter this uh, right now with your... Uh, no, <laughs> three skulls turn, here. Uh, with, with your turn two uh, army. Yeah, it's uh, but this But this does look like a very good settling spot, so... Uh, what you can do is actually pre-claim this area by building an outpost with your hero, and then you can turn that outpost into Dark Elf Town. That makes sense. Of surface dwellers. Uh, yeah, it's filled like that, with uh, like this is a very like rich resource pocket here. Like uh, you know, you don't generally see this many resources together. They all need to have some the enemies kicked off. Um, There's a gold vein, mm -hmm. fox crystals. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. There is, yeah. But you can I take them out one by one. Take your guess. Take your time. So in the meantime, that you build your outpost, you can, uh, yeah, build up your forces. Uh, yeah. Can anyone build? Uh, can anyone build outposts, or does it have to be a hero? Uh, your heroes. Yeah, your heroes can yeah. build outposts. I think maybe there are some other skills that allow you to do that. But uh, normally, it's just your heroes. Cool. All right, uh, let's go take a look at those monsters that I saw over here. Lesser Stone Lesser... Spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tier they're 1. Like a, um, they've got 100 army value. Uh, you should be able to take them out uh, very easily. So... I think that's an appropriate first battle. Yeah. All right. So you have the choice of going in manual or auto. Yeah, I you know normally I might might auto this because it's such an easy <laughs> combat, but uh, yeah. let's show it off. Let's let's do it. Okay, the proper way. Yeah, 
cool. So every weird. combat map that you encounter uh, or, or will take place in the, the hex, the world map hex, and then represent it in detail on uh, in, in the combat layer. And here yeah. you get to pit units together using turn-based combat, where you can micromanage uh, units' ability usage. But of course, if you yeah. are more of a GSG player and you want to do everything uh, more from a higher tier, you can just auto auto these these battles, and the AI will simulate the entire battle. You can actually watch it back, see how how the AI has deployed all the abilities. So auto auto battles actually play out the uh, the, the entire combat, um, uh, which uh, uh, so it's not some sort of like fake um, approximation of what the battle would be. That's really cool. And there's a lot of tactics there. Uh, that's what <laughs> it is, tactical combat after all. Uh -huh. So you have to be, you have to think about how far the enemy units yeah. can travel and stuff. Um, yeah, so this so is the range the, the enemy can go. But uh, yeah. I don't think you have, you have a lot to fear uh, with your ruler from these guys. Oh, probably not. Um, yeah. I'm so going to go ahead shock, with my... Shock troops, Sorry. yeah. So you've Sorry, turned yeah. off the uh, tutorials. Normally, you uh, looks they would be interfering, of course, too much. So the game uses three action points. So that means the further that you move, the less uh, attacks they have left. So if you um, move all the way, there is um, nothing. Yeah, you that can see here the the three dots, right? Uh, yeah, they represent your action points. So. Yeah. So this is a shock unit, meaning uh, sort of uh, the unit can charge in into battles. Uh, they do a lot of damage, but they do not have shields to protect themselves. And I'll go ahead and move them up. Yeah. Maybe a little tricky to leverage my whole frontage, but hey, I don't think I need to. Yeah. And then you can rotate any... so you're facing the enemy, right? That's pretty important. Yeah, so you, you uh, can't get flanked. Exactly. Flanking is a huge thing in the game. You get shot from the back or from the sides, you take extra damage. So your leader can throw uh, ranged attacks. We have a archer unit here, so all these icons above the unit's heads indicate the unit role. So even though there are tons and tons of units in the game, these, uh, this categorization really helps you identify the type of units they are. Yeah. And this is a battle mage, uh, the little uh, sort of whirly, sparkly thing. Weakening and of course, You can also cast spells, or your heroes can cast spells during combat. Yeah, really, but not really in the first round. Stuff. Not True. in the third round, so you have to wait one turn before you can uh, sort of alpha strike them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, so they take uh, a very careful approach. They, uh, they are uh, melee units as well. They're playing it safely here. Okay. Yeah, so they have uh, activated the defensive mode. Yeah. They but just my go in and hack shock troops cancel retaliation, which is yeah. nice, right? That's that's really nice. Boom. Because otherwise they would be hitting back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's gang up on that one. Yeah. And you pin them down as well. If they want to move away, uh, flee, then they will take uh, an attack of opportunity. And this one is the element unit I, of... I found. <laughs> yeah, one elemental versus another. <laughs> yeah. And here I can see the hit chance, right? From uh, that yeah. position. So, uh, if... Yeah, so 100% from that particular position, and you still have two shots left if you use your uh, magic bolts. Oh, that's so a kill. That... Yeah. Does it. Do units gain experience from killing enemy units? Or is um, the experience kind of shared at the end? It's shared at the end. We uh, in the previous games, it you could micro uh, which units got the, uh, the the XP, which led to uh, people really uh, you know like loading all of like the final kills on top of their heroes, so they could 
gain a lot of uh, XP um, quickly, which was led to a lot of un unbalances and basically destroyed a bit of the fun. Because um, especially in multiplayer, people felt that they had to play that way to yeah. optimize uh, XP. So the, uh, the entire combat experience became sort of like an XP harvesting game, which... Um, yeah, people that. might find fun, but it, there's a lot more to combat than that. So yeah. Like... No, I agree. Uh, and now in the but... second turn, your uh, your spells have unlocked. So there's um, on the circle, you'll see a couple of like uh, there's three slots of uh, of, of standards, and but this is your full list. Uh, soul fire, right. ice shackles, which uh, can slow the enemies. Uh, but I don't think you need uh, to waste mana. No, or, uh, it's uh, it's unnecessary. Low morale. If morale sinks far enough, then uh, they will flee. Even just lowering the morale might mean they fumble their attacks. Uh, so it's a, it's a it's a huge thing to keep your your morale in in check. Yeah, there's <clears throat> other ways you can sort of yeah. weaken them or soften them up, right? You can slow them. Especially or... dark is is a is a very much a debuffing culture. Uh, yeah. Order is all about more uh, rallying troops, uh, but uh, dark is really uh, there's a lot of like demotivating uh, powers. Very nice. And here, here you know, I, I used to play a warlock in uh, World of Warcraft, of course. So I prefer okay. these styles. <laughs> debuffing. Uh, debuffing. Yeah. All right, flanked. Nice. I'm gonna sneakily attack him from behind. There you go, final uh, strike. Cool. You got him. Like stealing candy from a child. And here we see yeah. that uh, I, I do get these rewards from having picked... Uh, what's yep. it called? Raiders or something. Uh, Ruthless Raiders, yeah. Ruth, so they yeah. provide uh, some extra draft, so you can recruit units faster and some extra gold to your to the nearest town, which is your capital, which you just named. Very yeah. nice. Cool. So then, uh, so you have two mana nodes near, which I think is pretty cool if you're at least this uh, dark magic uh, user. Uh, so your town will expand after a number of turns. So maybe if you can click on your town. Um, there is three turns left. Uh, you can rush this by spending Imperium. Imperium is sort of a global resource that is all about empire development and makes allows you to make sort of like wide versus tall choices. So you can in, in, uh, spend Imperium on the Empire Tree, allowing you to unlock new ways to, to build out your uh, your empire. So that's basically going tall. Um, or you can spend it to expand faster. Uh, so in this case here, you can at attract population. But also note that you need Imperium uh, to found new cities or to integrate conquered cities into your uh, domain. Um, so you it's have very useful currency. Yeah, yeah. So it is, it is foreshadowed if you do a tooltip uh, on how much it will actually cost to found your first, your second city. So, uh, so you know when you spend it that you, at one point you need uh, that Imperium to, for example, turn an outpost into a fully fledged city. Yeah, that's two hundred Imperium. It's not too much, but you have to save up. So yep. that's cool. <clears throat> Yeah. All right. You can oh, sorry. I'll uh, just yeah. spend the moves. Yeah, here. Yeah. And the turn. All right. So you're gonna go deeper into the underground, or are you gonna expand on the surface? Uh, that's a good question. Oh, you meet another ruler there. Ah. Huh. Here's the opposition. Well, you're concealed. But then you can determine, like you, you probably hidden in forests or something. Uh, you can decide to reveal yourself to this ruler, or you can uh, decide to stay hidden. This is actually uh, pretty cool. Um, Interesting or you choice. Can say there. hello and do a mouse over. Maybe you can see who they are. I don't know if they fully revealed yet. Maybe you only see no. that after you after you pop out. It looks like it I only look... see the portrait. Uh, it's a rat or sees a rat. Yeah. yeah, it looks really cool. I won't make hey, you meet him. Uh, yeah. Let's let's meet him. Let's say hello. Oh, I think he's hey got a a partner in 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 crime. Yeah, he looks pretty evil. 
Yeah, yeah. And they don't really like you, but maybe you can, you can, they've got like a, a minus uh, 200 uh, relation. Contempt, I mean, yeah, evil people uh, maybe do not see them <laughs> too fondly initially. But you can work on your relation, maybe by sending them a welcome gift. Or you can, you can just threaten them. Maybe he respects uh, yeah, the sword this... more than... <laughs> This is a proper, this is a proper empire, and then there are uh, yes, three, this is a... three cities, right, that are minor. Yep. Um, this is actually a proper empire. So, is there any way to peacefully integrate them, or kind of? Uh, entire empires. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you basically need to knock them down in submission, and then uh, they become your. They can become your vassals. So you can have free cities or minor factions that become your vassals. Uh, or you can turn individual cities into vassal cities. But you can also have entire factions turning into vassals. But that's generally a later game thing. They won't just do that at the start of uh, of, a, of a new game. Right. Well, evil and or they... not, partners in crime or not, uh, they look like a slave race. So... Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Set like gonna... a true dark elf. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm just going to roleplay this here. Threatening welcome. Uh, let's not make uh, our relations too Perhaps good. Perhaps insults uh, were to expect us from an empress such as you. Make no mistake, you will pay for addressing me like this. Okay. Good, good, good. Let's see if we can get some action going there later on. Uh, mm. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> not not the way you would play, maybe. <laughs> maybe not the famous not? way of playing either, but hey. You need to be pretty confident in your strength. Uh, let's see, there's, that's where their army comes from. They come from the north. Just a little stack. Yeah, there's a stack. I think I'm going to follow the road up here. There's their castle. All right, that's actually pretty close. Slog slot. Okay. Cute All right. Name. And here's my next scout, I think, that mm -hmm. I built. Let's keep scouting out the underground. And you can put you can them on auto. As yeah, well, and right? you can excavate terrain as well. So this is like looks like diggable earth. And if you uh, click on the little uh, shovel, from your oh unit. sorry, uh, okay there, excavation right, cool. So all oh, units can do that. Or uh, yeah, when you have uh, underground adaption, you you start with that. Yeah, really. You nice. click on the shovel on the map, and it will start digging it out. If you want to, but you don't know what you can uncover. You might encounter like some nasty creatures, uh, or you can find some nice resources. But so it's also, it's a bit of a risk if you start digging in the underground. Yeah, I think it's really cool how sort of uh, what do you call it, plastic <laughs> the the map really is, and how much it can change, which is uh, I think rather unusual in uh, in games like this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, terraforming. Terraforming. Yeah. It's a big thing. Uh, some later game spells. And here I, I see I can develop my empire now using this uh, cool Imperium currency. Yes. So here is what we call the, the Empire Tree. Uh, so if you see, um, uh, there is the six main affinities. And if this is, of course, your purple is shadow. And the, depending on how many points you have in your uh, affinity tree, uh, also in your affinities, it will determine the speed at which skills will unlock. Uh, you still need to buy them using Imperium, but if you um, have, for example, you go main maxing on Shadow, you will unlock all those Shadow abilities uh, quicker. If you have zero in one, it means that you will never acquire a, a skill there. So if you're zero in nature, uh, and you really want to have a particular nature growth boosting thing, you really need to find a way to acquire a nature affinity point. And then the tree right. all the way at the bottom uh, is the general uh, skills. So these are available to everyone. Um, and they do not pr uh, require um, individual uh, affinity points, but they... Um, they unlock over time. Cool. Yeah, so here there's stuff like seafaring and excavation, which I started with. Yeah, uh, so that's unlocked from the start. Yeah. So it's stuff like everyone can make use of. <clears throat> cool. Well, I guess I'll pick this one. It costs 50 Imperium, but... 
So you get more knowledge for every hero that you kill. Yeah. yeah. Hey, that's good. Yeah. So maybe uh, cruel counts as a hero as well. So maybe if you kill him, uh, you get like. It's so learning by doing or re researching by doing. Ah, uh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. And then we end the turn. I think the turns are pretty quick. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, classic turns. Yeah, so that means that every turn is, uh, is, is happens in sequence. There's also simultaneous turns, uh, which is also great for multiplayer, where everybody takes their turn at the same time, and then uh, turns go a lot faster. But there is a an element of speed required, so the the, the turns happen almost in real time. So it's almost like a GSG then, uh, Hendrik. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. I need to try it in that mode. Oh yeah, here's the ocean or sea. Yep. Some kind. Yeah, so, you know, you need to scout a little more to see uh, if it's just a lake or something else. There are a lot of monsters about up here. Yeah, this is uh, what we call like a like a high value area. So that means that there's a lot of uh, good stuff in there, but it's also uh, guarded. And generally, it's also a con yeah conflict point between uh, players. Right. Yeah, most uh, but stuff you might, is. You, you, but it's, it's good to right? put your uh, put your flag down uh, because if the if you have an outpost uh, there, it means that if the other player goes there and they want to claim it as well, you get a grievance to the, towards them. Um, mm. Yeah, I think I'll. Uh, but only heroes could be an outpost, you said, right? So yeah, I should probably move up there with my empress. Yep, uh, unless you have another hero uh, at the ready, but. Uh, and here we can see the the really cool thing. Uh, I love this. How you can sort of annex provinces to yep. your cities. So each little icon uh, indicates uh, what you can build in an individual province. Um, so of course you've got your farms, you've got gold, you've got uh, quarries, you've got lumbers, which provide both food and uh, and production, and then there's a special blue and and purple one. So the purple one is a, a research outpost, and the uh, blue one is a conduit, which provides additional mana. Um, so this, so basically, you expand and work the province in one action. So you don't need to go in and and build a, a worker to to do it. This is quite quick, and uh, automatically roads are generated in the area that you expand, so you can really crawl towards important resources, for example, or to maybe to the cave. Uh, exit uh, but it's always good to claim these resources because if you do a, a mouse over uh, on the uh, on one of the icons you see what you will get so it, this will also immediately add in any event whatever you choose the mana node will give the 10 additional mana so if you choose then the uh, the conduit it will add another five uh, mana to it but there's uh, more to it uh, because when you start building uh, in your town you can boost production of particular upgrades in your city, depending mm -hmm. on what province improvements you have. So, for example, if you want to build a temple, uh, you want to build it faster, you might need a quarry. I'm not sure if I'm correct now, because it's this from memory. Um, so it also depends on your building strategy in your town, what sort of uh, province uh, improvements you can choose. Later on, there's but also ways to, to find synergies, adjacency bonuses, and all that stuff. But it's pretty good to have sort of at least one of each then, I guess. Uh, and the cool thing is that some require one of these special resources. Yeah. Like you need, you need a mana node to be yeah, on the I, research I, post. Um, yeah, I, I would always choose one that has like an additional resource in it. So in this case, there's uh, one with a, a, a quarry uh, uh, there, there's one with a mine, and then there's one with a resource post. I would pick one of those, and then which improvement you choose really depends on what you want to build next, what, what do you want to boost. Um, yeah, I guess another consideration uh, is to extend your borders in such a way that you you block off choke points, maybe, or block off territories. Uh, absolutely, like, that's another factor. So that's that's a huge uh, amount of choices uh, there. So you don't want someone to uh, come down and, uh, and and block your passage, for example. Uh, uh, but this this is, gives a little bit of food. So yeah, uh, the, uh, the 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 mushrooms there provide a, a, a bigger bonus. 
Yeah, but I think size. Wouldn't this be a reasonable choice? Because this has a quarry, and if yep. I pick the farm, I'll also get some food. Yeah. Uh, okay. So production food, and I'm gonna block off the underground passage, right? Yeah, that's that's, and you and you create a road there as well, so that's cool. Yeah. So I think I think I'll do that, unless I'm being stupid. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. It's too late now. It's uh, cool. And there are border screw. Uh, it's it's all about painting the map, folks. Um, yeah, there's lots of map painting here. Yeah. Next turn. Wow, a lot of stuff happening here. Uh, I researched the Crow Companion. Yes. Uh, right, so I probably want to enchant my units with that. Mm -hmm. But first select a new one. <clears throat> Oh, Wayfinder, that's also a scouty thing. Yeah, so these are like early game uh, unit enchantments, so this makes them move faster. Um, and Soul Binding. It's another unit enchantment, so Tome of Souls. Right, so that's, that's for Necromancer type. Uh, yeah, so this affects play, your right? battle mage units and your support units. Now you've got one battle mage in the army. And this is a debuff spell. Um, you can and you can also, if you don't like any of these, you can shuffle re your research at the cost of some mana, and you will get a new batch. Unless you really like something here. Cool. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I think scouting is probably good. So, mm -hmm. going with that, and let's let's start Last enchanting my scout. It will take so one I'll... turn. Yeah. Uh, and we have built a workshop. So let's. Yeah, so if you do, if you look at the experimentation chambers, I don't know what that that is. You see a little check marks. It's boosted oh, because you got boosted. the farm. <clears throat> mm. So the experimentation chambers provide uh, knowledge and some gold income. Uh, I wonder what uh, what people do there in the experimentation. <laughs> so this is a special. Uh. This is a special city upgrade that's coming from your dark culture, and it unlocks the under the underground laboratory. Um, so if you do mouse oh, over, right. you can see what it does. And so that is more. And right, that so basically basically yeah, so okay, so that's another thing you should probably look at before you choose where you expand, right? If I yep. wanted yep. the storehouse, I should probably have built a forester in yep. the province instead. Uh, I think I'll actually... I'm gonna pick that anyway. Um, yep. And then the early game buildings, of course, have only like a single prerequisite. But if you go on later on, you you might have uh, multiple uh, province improvements required in order to boost or to build even. Right. So how many um, units? I mean, how important do you think it is to sort of build up your army quickly? <clears throat> it, it is very important. Uh, armies, uh, they're going around killing stuff and uh, gathering XP and loot is, is a very important part of boosting your early game economy, uh, growing your early game might, uh, but you just need to be careful that you don't lose units. Uh, we decided for Age of 4 to add a dual production queue, that means that you can build, because you've got quite a bit of money saved up, meaning that you can build units and structures at the same time, so if you do lose units, you do not like totally cripple your economy because you need to delay building upgrades, so we have separate queues, you can always replenish units, but, but do be careful that you don't wipe your main stack on a ill-timed um, fight against some uh, some brigands. Right. Yeah, so it's it's useful to have a second army, even if it's not led by a hero then, perhaps. I'll... <coughs> yeah, it's always good to start building on those, but, but put them to use. I think uh, this f plotting out early on a good sort of route along nodes, upgrade or to, to, to clear so you can then build your your towns and expand over them that that's really important but also just to find loot uh kit out your weapons with kit out your unit uh, heroes with stronger uh, magical weapons and so forth is uh, is really important cool uh okay so i got another upgrade to my empire uh, but I would I save I a little bit. I, I, personally, I would go in and uh, go with my uh, my the ruler at the surface. See if uh, next turn, if you can build a um, province at like a good spot. 
Yeah. Maybe, maybe here over the uh, close or over the underground passage, you block it from the uh, the rats that they, they don't enter that as quickly, and then start clearing out the um, the nodes that you find here. There's one yeah. which is a magic material with the floating floating thing, which is more powerful, which is called a magic material. Um, that's Wait, where is like that? Uh, the the flower. Do you see the floating snake thing? Yeah. There's this flower. Uh, oh, not that one. Uh, to the uh, uh, there. Oh, okay. Well, that's a scary looking monster there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you don't want to attack yeah. that. Uh, Necrotic. Oh, silver tongue silver fruit. Tongue fruit. Yeah. That looks really so cool. So this is great if you want to go take the diplomatic route. So your whispering stones, which is basically your. Uh, your, your sort of like palantirs that, that you uh, give to independent factions in order to talk to them. You can start sort of integrating them and manipulating them. Oh, cool. But you actually haven't found an independent faction yet. Uh, no. I, it's a little surprising. I expected to yeah, see I a mean, free, uh, free city. Yeah. So, yeah, right, where is the outpost? Um, Function now. It's yeah, I think you are standing on top of. Uh, an, on yeah, I can't do it there. On, oh. if, you, if you click on a province just next to it, just on an yeah on an empty bit of terrain, then there's the build outpost. But then you don't have the hero in that one. But you can, probably can build an outpost on the province that you are standing. It's right here, fifty gold. Oh, I don't have any movement yeah, just, points. But yeah, it doesn't matter. You, you can you're you're in it, so you can just build this one if you want to. Oh right, you are. Right, you yeah. are. Uh, there it is. Good advice from the maker of the game. <laughs> Claims oh, uh, province. So there's it, already oh. a cool bright oh, board has a distant claim. Hmm. Yeah, because he's he you know, we saw his capital quite near. Uh so that's just a minor grievance and will probably end up uh, at uh, in war anyway. But, um Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind. I think this is a very good uh, choke point mm -hmm. to to build an outpost. So there it's under construction. Yeah, so it will take two turns. Of course, there's Empire Tree uh, skills that uh, can upgrade this and make it go faster. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's a free city. It's like angel dwarves or something. I love it. Yeah. these. This is um, not your average free city. So they, these are like super buffed. Uh, you know, not your little halfling town or your 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 wholesome dwarfs just hanging out. But this this is proper high level free city. I love the way they greet me with, you know, we admit that your presence fills us with dread, but we acknowledge your magnificence. Uh, <laughs> All right, that's, that's cool. Okay, uh, we are not accustomed to being surrounded by so much death. <laughs> <laughs> So these are obviously, yeah, they're good, good aligned. Uh, yes. And we are evil, of course. Yeah. So it, only a minus uh, one hundred uh, relationship. Oh, they've got one chaos point. What's uh, you know, what's the pros and cons of trying to integrate uh, a race that is very differently aligned? <laughs> uh, well, they it will go slower. Uh, because the, your relationship is not compatible, uh, so you have like an al a penalty on the relation with alignment, so that uh, mm. might uh, be. Um, and then some of the, if you take the, the um, this route, you might may get events that affect your alignment. So you 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 might get tested on being evil, right? So you get an event that says like, okay, do you want to do this or this for me? And then generally, if you want to help them. You may get like a good alignment modifier, uh, right. which you may not want. <laughs> well, for but you can, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit uh, of a gamble here. It will it will go slower, but if but you uh, you can't take on this this town uh, yet with your with your face. So if you want to conquer it, you want to start a siege, you you will need to build up some more troops. Yeah, but I, I only have one whispering stone, but. Uh... I yeah, can just take give, it back, I mean, right? uh, maybe oh. before the other uh, player goes in and, 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 and 
exterminate yeah. because the other player is evil as well. So they will that's, face a similar penalty. Oh, that's a really good point. Cool, yeah, and here's the sort of track where you can see how how far yeah. along you are to the next state of uh, yeah. friendship, I suppose. Yeah, and even if they are, if, if you, they're half integrated, you can still conquer them anyway, right? Uh, you can backstab them halfway. It's, uh, it's never too late to conquer people. <laughs> <No. laughs> All right, next turn. I have a good feeling about this. This is a real sweet spot here. Um, it's a shame there's, yeah, there's a... There's a lot of stuff, but these <laughs> these guys are going to be making a move for it as well. So. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna it's be a relatively tough, small, small map, I think. Tough competition there. All right, mm -hmm. let's cast the uh, Prow Companions spell. <clears throat> and this will be cast now on both of my... Yeah, so you've got to, so th this will be uh, affecting all units of particular type, and the um, the upkeep will increase of the spell depending on how many units of type you have. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. If you end up spamming the entire map with scouts, then uh, they will all get enchanted. They all require uh, some mana upkeep. Right. Keep the, so next keep time I build a scout, up. it's going to be automatically enchanted. Yes. All right. <clears throat> but of course, you can uh, remove the spell at one point. So, if at one point you have explored the entire map, uh, you can just uh, get rid of that spell. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I think I'm pretty good for mana. For now. Anyway. Yeah. Well, you like uh, some surplus, but only ten. See, I have my army. I'm packing the big guns now. Yeah. Maybe maybe take uh, these on. Mm -hmm. it looks like some sort of mole people. Yeah, there's such a variety, are... such a variety of monsters and creatures. It almost boggles the mind a little bit. Uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna go in or auto it. Well, we did a manual one. Let's see what happens if I auto it. Uh, yeah, if you lose a unit, you can always re retry yourself and do it manually. Don't like the outcome. That's very generous. Oh, I lost a unit. Boom. Yeah. Uh, so the retry button. Now you got twelve craft twelve gold. Right. So here we are at a nice surface map with a cool looking mana node. Oh, look at that! It's beautiful. Yeah. I think if you destroy those shards, uh, there is some sort of like an effect coming from it. Oh, really? You can destroy this? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna... I might get destroyed as uh, collateral damage as well. I'll bring up my melee types. I find yep. it can be a little tricky to... There are like obstacles to your line of sight, so your ranged units... If you stand directly behind them... Um, Sometimes. That, uh, it's fine. Yeah. Bring them all up. It's a little dangerous. Oh, cool. Not yet. Yeah, be careful with the uh, pikemen because they will a first strike and they do more damage against uh, large yeah. units at once. But I don't. They don't look very fast. These guys, so it should be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let it come. All right. Um. Okay. So I can they have first them. strikes. If you if you if you attack, uh, well, the uh, these are of course uh, um, shock units. So they mm. um, same as my own, right? Um, maybe cast a spell. What do we yep. have? And of course they they don't carry shields, so uh, shooting some arrows into them is a good idea. All right. Ice shackles. Ice shackles. Oh yeah, that's cool. I mean, you can. Uh, Let's do get it. Multiples. Boom. It's it also, okay. It yeah. So that, that's really good. Yeah. And maybe just move up a little bit. But it will give you more time to use uh, ranged attacks. Yeah. You've got three ranged units as your ruler, 
and then there's the archers, and then there's the battle mages that can uh, shoot over distance. So, yeah, there's a 90% chance. Boom. Take thoughts. Yeah. So there's one, 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 one figure went down, that means that uh, the, for the same ratio, uh, their damage output has gone down as well. Yeah, but I noticed uh, creating a, a a faction that you can pick a trait that means your units don't weaken. I think <laughs> is that correct? Okay. Like, like they, they they hit at like full strength even if they're damaged. It sounds super powerful, but yeah. maybe I maybe I missed. Yeah, for every uh, like rule, there's an exclusion to uh, to get sort of get around that. Oh, if you you know like you can't cast magic first turn, but there's also like uh, there's a trait somewhere which. Allows you to do that faster. I, I really like those kind of uh, rule breaking mechanics. I uh, <coughs> actually want to have something like that in, in Crusader Kings 3 at some point. Like you can mm. intentionally break some uh, religious law <laughs> or restriction uh, or a penalty. Yeah, there's uh, generally like a lot of uh, rulers that break the rules that. Uh, yeah, you know. Got quite far. <laughs> the, po the Pope tells me not, but hey. I could probably ignore that. See what happens. Yeah. See what happens uh, yeah. uh, all right, killing some. Now, have there ever been discussions uh, to add like combat layers into the GSGs? Uh, yes, for sure. Um, the the real time format and the multiplayer requirement uh, makes it mm -hmm. hard. Uh, of course, I imagine. Yeah, you can't really pause the game. While every combat is re <laughs> manually resolved and so on, but uh, yeah. I think what we did with Solaris is probably uh, a fairly good compromise, where combat actually happens on the strategic layer, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it fits with the flow of the game. Uh, yeah. Right. One, One more to go, unit. and that's a kill. Go. Increasing morale. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, they're kind of cute, those little mole guys. If oh, you click I... on, d double click on them, you get like their their unit card. Oh wow, cool! <laughs> little right, look at that angry little fella with a big sword. Uh. <laughs> Speak softly and carry a big sword. Uh oh. Pretty poor line of sight there, but hey. Mm -hmm. Move forward. Hmm. Ill shot. There we go. That was better than the auto resolve. <clears throat> but it's interesting to note Three. that the the auto resolve, auto resolve was close. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, yeah, well, same guy. Uh, these, he uh, almost these uh, yeah. shock troops that take a lot of risk. Uh, I think in ancient times, like in the medieval times, you get like paid a lot uh, as a as you were like a, a longsword man because the chance that you actually die during the battle was was really high, so they could right. pay you premium. So you got paid only if you survive, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I know um, mercenaries kind of, at least the Italian mercenaries, favored crossbows, maybe for a reason. <laughs> Keep your distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, OK. Visor of Farsight, here's some loot. This All is right. cool. So you can, if you open the hero screen, you can immediately equip it. Um... Yeah, here we go. She doesn't have headgear, so that's a nice bonus. Yeah. See further, oh. and you get some defense bonus. So that's cool. Yeah. Good stuff. Now I need mm -hmm. to rest up here. Um, in yeah. friendly ter territory, I think it's instant. Is that correct? Or yeah, you regenerate uh, faster in your own territory. Uh, but this uh, outpost will, of course, build in another turn. Uh, so then you get like a little do domain. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, they'll wait for that. I think. What's my scout chat? 
Um, what paradox do I have to bribe to get early access? Oh, sorry, we don't do the early access. <laughs> <laughs> Patience. All right, here's a stash. I'm going to go uh, get some mana. We're only going to have time to scratch the surface here because uh, the yeah, new game there's, is... I mean, such a game would immediately, uh, you know, it could take you 10 hours to finish a uh, single session. Um, yeah, and I think one thing that we're probably not going to have time to show is sort of the diplomacy between empires and how involved that is mm -hmm. at integrating free cities as well. I think it's cool. Yeah. Oh, here they are. Uh, look. Yeah, high stakes. Oh, here he is again. He wants to play a game with you. He wants to play a game with me. Um, uh -huh. What should have been a pleasant, pleasant way to exchange favors suddenly turns into a diplomatic disaster. Okay. I can choose to beat him. Give him a yeah. lot of money, actually. <laughs> yeah, but um, he doesn't like you as much, but you can also let him win. Hmm. That costs a lot of money. Yeah. But he will, uh, he will integrate farther. Oh, and here's a chance to actually go deeper into evil. Uh, uh -huh. that's also nice, but I don't know. You can also. Uh, that's a more Imperium. Tough choice, this one. But I, I, I guess I'm, I'm trying to integrate them, <laughs> so I'm going to. I guess we'll keep going with that. I have money. <clears throat> Cool. Oh, yeah. I guess we should have expected this. Uh, Rule. Blight Lord is not happy with my encroachment, I guess. Declaration of rivalry. Okay. So now we yeah. basically know what he's up to, right? <laughs> he's gonna yeah, yeah, in. yeah. He didn't like you uh, founding that outpost uh, in his backyard. I probably wouldn't have liked that either. That's yeah, cool. We can annex another province. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, what would be a good choice? Another of the special ones, I suppose. Oh. Yeah, you, you can take a look at uh, what you want to build. If there's any anything that you want to boost, um, so it depends on the victory condition that you're going to pursue, right? If you say I'm going to be, I want to go for magic victory. That means you need to get all the knowledge that, that you can acquire and mana as well. Or you can go for an expansion victory. That means that grow as quick as you, uh, as you can because the number of provinces that you have is a factor in that victory condition. Yeah. Or you want to go maybe go for conquest and uh, you gather resources to build troops and, uh, and draft units. Um, no, easy, no easy answers. And that's what makes good no, gameplay. I think early on it, uh, it, it, you, you can be more like, okay, what uh, feels right at this particular moment, what are my short-term gains? I mean, <clears throat> there is a gold mine as well, but I think I have a lot of gold. Uh, go with the yes, research. spirals. There are multiple victories. We have uh, conquest victory. We have magic victory. We've got expansion victory, and we have a score victory if games mm. drag on for too long. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's it's interesting with victories. You you kind of want to put them at the point where players feel. But they are winning, <laughs> I think. Uh, oh, that's only yeah. like the, the mock buff. Yeah, and you can track how you're doing inside of the diplomatic overview. So there's this, uh, those little balancing skills in the top of the UI. Uh, you, if you, uh, that, that balancing is a, scales. Uh, Where is that? Yeah, next to your Imperium button. Oh, um, there. Okay. Yeah. So this is the overall score. And uh, we're actually si uh, sixth. Uh, of the overall score. I'm and not military playing very ranking. Well. Uh, I'm, oh man, I'm seventh. Ooh, yeah. So be All careful right. who you <laughs> wage war with. <laughs> well, I suck at this. I'm fairly no, good well, at I give magic. you very bad advice. I mean, maybe you're just having too much fun chatting and role playing. Um, oh shit, I'm falling behind on everything here. Except for magic. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I need yeah, to play the game but, more. But I think we've just we've just invested into this new town, and I think we could start uh, actually turning this into a uh, settlement right now. I think some players might have already done this. They've already, they might already have their second town. So if we can just start and 
uh, found a city of the true elves. It costs 200 uh, Imperium. Oh, I, I can actually afford that. Yes. Uh, let's do that. Go. Cool. Why not? I hope you I don't turn it into. Sorry. I hope I don't ruin the special resource or anything like that by founding it. No, no. You will uh, if, once you clear it, you will get the effects. So oh, I nice. think uh, right now uh, we can uh, start clearing those nodes and uh, start building up uh, oh. our e economy. And um, I think I'll go in and rest then in the outpost. Well, that guy was almost dead. Um, all right. Did I? Yeah, we need to build another unit there as well. Yeah, <clears throat> I guess I'm a little slow getting to the second tier. Is is Dread Spire right? That's when you get the tier two units, isn't it? Oh, okay. There's another question from chat. Can you disable victory types? Yes, you can disable them in the advanced settings if you like. Question is what to do with this lone guy here. Can decide uh, what to start with. Cannibal toads or lightning shitting beavers. Oh, we don't have beavers, you have moles though. <laughs> Cannibal toads, yes. Beavers, no. Beavers might be <laughs> DLC. Uh, who knows? Uh, let's go. Beaver DLC. <laughs> Beaver DLC. Maybe pandas as well. All right, cool. All right. We're only on turn eight. Uh, uh, okay, so we got that fast movement buff to the scouts. Yes, it's nice. Uh, yes, you will be able to mod in new races. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. New uh, basic forms. Of course, it will take some time to uh, to model. That's I think a, lo a lot of work and requires some uh, speciality. But adding in new t traits uh, should be fairly easy. Um, we'll uh, when the game ships, we'll have a modding guide ready. Uh, for the uh, for the audience, so um, people will be able to get started with modding right away. There's another underground passage. Uh, all right. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. Let's see where that leads. Oh. Oh, look at this. Mist Hostile Cinderhold. Oh, look, another cute mole. Uh, bushy uh, eyebrows. Yeah. I love these guys. I love the the hairstyle. <laughs> Top knot. Uh, cool. Let's inspect them. Okay. Do we know when the drops from Twitch will be available for Agents for? Fortunately, there is technical issues with that. Uh... <laughs> um, that's all I can say right. at this point. So. They look hostile, or are they at war with me? Sorry. It looks like they're at war with me, these guys. Yeah, uh, they. Uh, this is a, an independent city uh, that uh, uh, dislikes you so much that they immediately declare war at the start of the game. Uh, some of them are like, just like that, so these can... Uh, they These are a real threat early on, so they, these start actually pretty close. Um, and at one point, they will s send out raiding parties so you better get ready, uh, Henrik. Uh, did you hmm. secretly just uh, choose uh, like, a, like a high difficulty level? or? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think so, but I love it. Uh, I want to keep, keep playing this game. Uh, right. I think maybe I should... Well, there's a... Ch no, it's in their territory. There's a loot drop over there. Okay. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, you can decide to, uh, to trespass and get the loot. I'm trying to uh, befriend then... them, so I'll probably wait. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, so you, uh, uh, like if you if you go and click on the city, uh, you will see that uh, when you reach the next stage, uh, you have an, a bit, uh, you you get to f freely enter their domain. So that is uh, best to wait a little bit until your relationships have uh, increased. Yeah, that's the first uh, kind of step, right? Isn't it? Where? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, strange, strange bedfellows. Maybe those angelic dwarves. But hey. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, e evil parties have been known to make we uh, weird alliances if it suits them, right? For sure. His historically as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not 
trying to roleplay chaotic evil as such. Uh, let's see. Another more upgrade. like a, a, a lawful evil guy. I yeah, think. I think so. Magic origin unit upkeep is reduced by. Oh yeah, so these are summoned units. They become cheaper. <clears throat> That's nice. Mm -hmm. But not something I particularly need. Ah, cool. And another Dark Warrior. Units can uh, assist. Like, if you have multiple stacks in combat, right, they can... Uh, yes, re you can have uh, up, up to three uh, stacks into a single battle. Uh, and there's a uh, like reinforcements range around each, uh, around each army of a couple of hexes. And so you can have uh, 18 units versus 18 unit battles. <clears throat> uh, let's upgrade my stronghold. Time is running out. Uh, what can we do? Uh, well, you can you can take a closer look at the city to see what their uh, defenses are. I think they have a wall, and you can see how many troops they have uh, inside of their uh, their town. They got 20 uh, siege defenses, fortification health, which is not much. Um, but it will require significant uh, force to attack. So if you maybe group all of you, start building troops, group everything together, and just launch an assault. Um, should be doable. Cool. Famous last words. <laughs> oh. oh, look. Here's another empire. <clears throat> really cool looking dwarves. Orc oh, sorry, orcs. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Ascaras, blind splitter, pretty evil as well. Yeah, minus so, time. This is not uh, not uh, not not elven spines. Let's be a bit more friendly with this empire. I don't need more enemies at this time. Yeah, I mean she's not hostile. I mean she doesn't have uh, the uh, not like overly hostile. So maybe send her a welcome gift. Yeah, uh, I did. I sent her 50 gold. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. well, I don't like being passive while building up my forces here, but... I'll go ahead. What's happening with my other city? Not still building? Cool. Oh, I should probably cast that uh, spell as well. Wayfinder enchantment. <clears throat> yep. Oh, I guess my city completed. So now another yeah. hero wants to join me. Yeah, your your hero cap goes up immediately after you. Uh, it's a soft cap. You can you can recruit more heroes if you want. Just like a, there's a city cap, but you can also go over the city cap. So this is a. Um, yeah, a, a cool hero that has the healing ability, and the other one has a far sensing. Healing is always good, I would say. Um, yeah. I'll, and then I'll go with this guy. Yeah. Uh, Crude. Two uh, heroes. Yes, here. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you can send them both in uh, and for the assault party. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, I got one more unit coming up soon, but I. You can already start the siege because the, the the siege happens on the world map. It takes a number of turns f for it to prepare. Um, there's particular siege projects that you can undertake to make it go faster, to do more damage towards the defending party. So that's an entire category of uh, research that you can uh, develop. And um, so you have some time to build up forces as the siege is in progress. Oh, look at this. <laughs> this is a... Oh, yeah, that's the Karach. It's, uh, this is a f unit from Age of Wonders 1. It's, um, it's, it's pretty strong. It's a tier 4. <laughs> tier 5, uh, I think. Tier 5, sorry, yes. A tier 5. Uh, and it, uh, it's, gar it's, it's coming from a, a monster spawner. So, yeah, that, that, that might provide some problems for our... Um, yeah, not allies. necessarily... Yeah, <laughs> it's still some, some distance away. It, but these <laughs> these allies can probably take them, uh, you know, keep them in check. This is cool. I uh, I can now summon bone golems as well. That, that could help with my upcoming attack. 
Uh, oh, I need a Starling. governor. Okay. So my hero can be the governor here. Do I need a governor? Uh, I would always pick a governor. Uh, so they, they will always provide benefits to you um, because depending on their affinities and some of them have uh, traits that actually buff uh, the income of town. Right. So every can't... hero oh, gets their own town. Did that... Oh, you're out of money. Yeah, he just bought yeah. the hero. That sucks. All right. Time for another one. <clears throat> oh, this is a nice one. Uh, let's go with Pro the quarry. Cool. I guess so. Uh, is there, <laughs> we're is coming there a up. lore summary? Uh, yeah, there is there some. Actually, I think there was a fan making a huge lore post, but we, uh, I'm, I'm sure that from our, uh, we have some something in the works for uh, for lore as well. Wow! Oh, a battle quest. Okay. Kill some some units. All right, the Gore Tusk Piglet. That's a really cute. Little unit there. Yeah, baby. Uh, Four. All right. Yeah, that sounds fun. So now I have a quest go ongoing here. Yeah. Uh, the boar lives underground. So there's a little uh, grill. There. That's cool. On the map. Yeah. So if you come, it's actually pretty close. You can probably complete it. You're very lucky because it spawns right next to your main stack. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah. It's a significant stack. Uh, maybe if you can move in the other folks as well, you can kill them with a more overwhelming force. You can use your reinforcement rule. Good point. Now attack with the, now attack with your main army uh, together. So they will add the the other army. Yeah. Yeah. Next turn, I think they're not in position. Yeah, they're close enough. Are they? Because the uh, re reinforcement range is multiple hexes. So you don't need to be oh. adjacent. There it is. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Cool. Like boom. So now you have both of them joining in, and both have a hero uh, guarding the stacks. It makes a lot of sense to spread your heroes out, because if you ha they have uh, bonuses uh, that uh, <coughs> cover an army, so um, but only the leading hero provides those bonuses to your uh, to a stack. Oh, no. I still lose one. Yeah, it's a shock troop there, a bit weak. But uh, I think it's worth it. You think it's worth letting him be dead? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Well, I think this this battle will have to wrap up. Um, yeah. But uh, let's cool. see if we can... Uh, no, you, can also look, uh, you can also auto it. If you uh, go in and uh, at the top bar, there is a uh, automatic combat uh, option. Yeah, And then you can make it go fast. Let's see. And there's the arrows at the top. So this is the exact same sort of uh, simulation or AI playing as when you choose auto yeah. outside of combat. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And then there's speed controls at the top. Which is probably uh, very familiar to GSG players. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can, of Eat course, it. always uh, like, like t turn it off again, and then you can manually uh, continue. So this is uh, something if you just want to right. be a true general and just uh, interfere when it's necessary. <laughs> oh, let's see what happens. I think I already lost the same unit again. <clears throat> Not unexpectedly. I didn't uh, check out what the reward was. Maybe it didn't say completing this uh sometimes there, there is a uh, part wow. of the reward is communicated at the start and sometimes you can pick a reward so uh let's see All right. a lot of food a lot of relations 300 right. wow well, well, that, that really helps okay food you can get some gold fairly low on gold i think oh i'm a sucker for loot though but uh but you can also get a unit to help off uh, kill the uh, moles that are 
hanging out in the underground. Oh yeah. Really depends on what you want to do and how uh, I'll take you want the units. I'll take the units. Take the units. <laughs> cool. Where did it spawn? Let's see. Is it in my capital? Yes, it is. Uh, yeah. Let's take a look. Let's open up the uh, the unit panel so you can take a quick look at it. Why isn't it? Uh... Right click. Oh, I thought it was double. Click. That's enemies. Okay. Yeah, that's in the in combat. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Highborn core pool arm unit. It has uh, it has been angelized. So angelized is one of the end game transformations that you can actually research in the uh, order tome uh, order path. And so it's kind of uh, <laughs> almost like an ascension or something. Really cool. I don't think yeah, yeah, they will yeah. like. Uh, they probably won't like my army. Uh, kind of different culture and everything, but hey. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Previously, every unit in the in your army had its, its own uh, alignment. Uh, now there, I think there's still some dedicated to good army uh, units out there, but um, yeah, yeah. not every angel that. is uh, is good. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm afraid uh, I'm gonna have to wrap here. Uh, yes. Unfortunately, it's, it's been a lot of fun, Henrik. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for. Uh, for showcasing the game. Oh, I love it. I mean, oh, I, I so look forward to the release version. Um, but it's already fully playable. <laughs> yeah, so it's so. Uh, a couple of more days. May 2nd will release. And uh, if you haven't already, uh, please uh, consider pre ordering the game. You get a nice bonus special character and an armor outfit for your customizations, pre order bonus. Or uh, consider wishlisting the game uh, on, the, on the platform of your choice. Um, thank you very much for watching all. And Hendrik, uh, thanks all. Thanks again to you. It's, and, it's uh, been a pleasure. See you all later. See Bye. you all later. Bye. That was great, everybody, wasn't it? Huge thanks to both Henrik and Leonard and Bjorn and Mikhail from earlier for showing us some Vicky. That is all for the show today, folks. Uh, we will be back, I was going to say next week the same time. We will be back next week the same time with some more things, but we'll be back a little bit earlier than that. May 2nd, we're going to be doing a release day stream for Age of Wonders 4. So we'll be able to uh, go through a big... Oh, hang on, I got to... I got to get out of this calls because they're talking in my ears now. Okay, that's good. Uh, I had Henrik and Leonard still in my ear there for a hot second. We'll be back on May 2nd with uh, a whole run of Age of Wonders 4 developers to uh, celebrate uh, the release of the game. And then we'll be back next week on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Um, CEST to stream. What do we have? We have more Victoria 3, uh, Voice of the People, and then we're going to have Stellaris Galactic Paragons to show off. So join us for those. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.